Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, you guys, we are in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and we are at, there it is, Lark Mountain Marketplace. Now, this is coming via recommendation from Jason of Mother Tucker's in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. We're gonna get inside, see if we can't find anything. I'm looking for Christmas, though I am seeing Halloween still in the windows. Let's see if we can find anything. Let's do it. Alrighty, guys, let's do this. Like I said, there was a Halloween still set up in the window, but boom, we did find some Christmas. Yes, we did. And I love it. It's a magical forest of ceramic Christmas trees, all kinds, all shapes, all sizes. They are all inclusive here. <laughs> Santa and his reindeer blow mold, absolutely adorable. He was for sale too. I kind of was tempted, I'm not going to lie, to keep him. <laughs> I didn't. I behaved myself. Oh, we've got another little angel blow mold. Look at a little tiny Christmas tree here. This one, um, the lights were glued in, but a lot of them are. It does not have a port for it to light up. So that was sad because, I don't know, I was a little tempted by this one. I don't, you know. She's tiny, but still cute. And the little white ones that you're seeing, those you can actually get those at Target. They're uh, battery operated. I do have two or three of those, actually. They're ornaments. You just cut off the little ribbon there at the top. Great to add in. I like the different heights in your magical Christmas tree forest. Here we are. We're doing a quick little overview. Now, there are two parts um, to the antique mall here, and we will definitely get to both parts in the video today. Now, obviously, this is not Christmas. However, in the back here, I am seeing this beautiful clear satin glass. What do they have it marked as? Mm-hmm. Um, so they do, in fact, have it marked. Look at that. The detail. Small chips inside of lid. I really appreciate that. Um, the fact that the, the seller actually pointed out exactly where the damage was, especially when it's smaller. It's on the interior um, you know, as a collector or a reseller, sometimes you get so excited at finding an item that you forget to actually look for any damage. And it's not until you get home that you're like, oh, no. And sometimes it happens when you're actually showing the item for sale. <laughs> not that that's ever happened to me. You're like, it's in really good. Oh, except for this ship here. <laughs> Here we have some great Jasper ware. Um, obviously, this stuff is going to be Wedgwood, but a lot of different colors. I think a lot of people immediately think, especially when you think Wedgwood uh, is blue, but they do, in fact, do a variety of different colors. Here we have an example of some Majolica vases. Very pretty. It's a very unique shape uh, for a Majolica vase. You typically will see them a little bit more ornate. Um, I do have a tendency to prefer the more ornate ones in a much more Art Nouveau style. This guy was, I don't know, he was like, hey, I want to be on camera. I said, okay, that's fine. You know, no royalties on it, sir. <laughs> uh, that jar there in the back, interestingly enough, it's very, it is a Vaseline glass. Um, you know, it gets that got that beautiful yellow color to it. However, I did have my flashlight today. It does not fluoresce at all. Um, I've actually never seen a piece of Vaseline glass uh, not fluoresce. So I don't know. Is it by, well, no, I guess the color is Vaseline um, and it doesn't necessarily have to glow. Now you see the little uh, art glass basket down here. You see that? Watch this. Boom. Yep. That handle, in fact, does fluoresce. It is an older one. Um, I'm going to say early 19, well, it could be late 1800s through early 1900s, uh, but it does have a little bit of a green hue to it. So that one was a little bit easier to spot. Um, I was kind of excited by it and it was priced at $48. It wasn't right for me for resale. However, um, given the fact that it does fluoresce and that it is going to be an older or more, pardon me, let me say antique piece of glass, I think that, that was an amazing deal. Here we've got some pink opalescent. I absolutely, as you guys probably know by now, or if you don't, and this is your first time here, I absolutely love opalescent glass. I think it is very luxurious. I think it's very high end. Um, I love the color play that you get and you don't have to have lights, um, even if you were to set it in just kind of like the middle of a room without a lot of light hitting it. These were really interesting. These blue glass, it's a decanter here. I'm unsure as to what would we call it a compote. 
um, but it does appear to have hand painted or enameled uh, birds on it. I thought that was really pretty. It was striking, especially against the blue. Another example of some majolica here, um, a lot of times I think people immediately think of vases. They did, in fact, make a variety of pieces, including serving pieces that you would eat on. Um, nothing says safety like eating off of lead paint. <laughs> But we used to paint our houses lead. Now, underneath here, you are seeing some custard glass. It does, in fact, fluoresce. My, I don't know. I think I need new batteries or I need to adjust it there. It was giving me some, some problems. But it was a beautiful, large piece with the ruffled edge there. It did have hand-painted floral detailing on it. Now here, again, the obsession with the opalescent is real, folks. We do have an example of clear opalescent, and it does have a tendency to be my most favorite. Um, this is a beautiful piece that you can use year-round at $20. Michael, why did you not get that? You know why? Because I was filming, and I only had one hand free, and I didn't want to pick up something immediately, and then I forgot it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sure did. A great child of Prague here. It is a chalkware. It very much reminds me of being a child and being at CCD on Sundays, every Sunday at like eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, I hated it when I was a child, but they do. There are some very fond uh, memories there. Sister Pompeon. <laughs> um, look at this unusual here we have got um this is frosted this is not satin glass satin glass is both on the interior and exterior this does happen to be fenton it is an anniversary piece celebrating their 100 year anniversary so it is going to be a little bit newer um but again frosted glass is going to be on the interior and exterior satin pardon me frosted is only on the exterior satin is both interior and exterior and you can see here um, it is only on the exterior but it's a beautiful example of some amber glass i think amber glass is um not as a prize because it, it does have a tendency to be a little bit more common uh, but seeing it in satin that that really did catch my eye now, I typically at $35, I think it was an unusual piece. It was an unusual pattern to me. Um, obviously, some uranium glass. We have some pink depression. We've got some marigold carnival there. You see a little bit of the yellow depression glass there in the back. Um, I really do like uranium glass. Again, uranium being green, Vaseline being yellow. Um, both typically do fluoresce, not always. But I will only go after those pieces um, if it's unusual, if the shape is unusual, the pattern is unusual, um, like plates, dishes, cups, saucers, occasionally I will if the price is right. Um, but again, if it's an unusual piece, I'll, I'll try to pick it up. Now here we have the hard plastic. I don't know that I want to call it blow mold. I don't know if it was achieved utilizing the same me method. Um, yes, it is Union Pacific plastic, so it is a harder plastic. He would have had like a little runner. That's why you're seeing the um, the holes there in his feet. At $37, it was a, a pretty good deal. Um, here we've got some very large brass ducks. They were priced at only, or are these swans? Swans, pardon me. At $100, you guys, these were about at least three to four feet tall. And at $100 a for the pair, I thought that was an amazing deal. I was immediately attracted to this Lennox Christmas display here. Um, they are a little bit newer. They're priced at $39. I love these toy soldiers or band members here on the little train cars there. It's a beautiful, simple, elegant pattern. Down below, I did see the deer here, again, with the holly berry detailing. It's simple. It's elegant. It's sophisticated. Look at the bow painted on there. I was tempted to get it. Um, you know, it's priced at $16. It does have a newer Lennox mark on it. I thought that it was still a really good deal, but I thought it was a good deal for a collector. Ideally, if I were to have picked up that piece, I would have liked to have started it at 16. Um, so that was a pass for me. Now here we've got, these are left in. It is obviously the chick. It is a canister set. And next to it, we've got some Holt Howard rooster wear. Um, now I have in the past found some more of the accessories, but I've never actually found the serving pieces. So that was fun. And that le left in chick, that was really good deal at $80. There was a little bit of damage. So I did decide to go ahead and pass on it.
Here we have a massive Jedi mixing or serving bowl. Um, this would be great for Christmas if you were going to serve like some pasta out of it. Ooh, imagine like a red sauced pasta in with that Jedi green. How beautiful would that be? Um, now, I did decide to go ahead and test out. Yep, because your Jedi, in fact, or pardon me, some Jedi will, in fact, glow. Um, the ones that will glow would be McKee and fire king does not glow jeanette will also glow um thank you stephanie vintage freak 32 for that tip i appreciate it and now i'm passing along the knowledge <laughs> i did see these absolutely adorable anthropomorphic deer salt and pepper shakers here very bambi-esque the brown one here they are marked japan um they were priced at 30 dollars, which again for a collector i think was a really good deal especially because you got that purple one but as a reseller i decided to pass on them now here I am seeing the Napco Santa planter in the cream. I had seen one previously for $65 and I didn't want to pick it up, even though at $65 I thought it was a really good collector's price. Um, here we've got an example of the Lefton Pixie. It's Holly, it's part of the Holly and Berry line, um, but it is the little mug. Those mugs are incredibly difficult to find. They did do in the Holly and Berry, they did do figural pieces, pixies, uh, reindeer. So if you ever find the reindeer or the pixies, make sure you snatch those up. Up because they are not very common. Here we've got a winking Santa mug with his little ermine hat there on the reverse was Mrs. Claus. Um, I was tempted to get it. However, I did ultimately decide to pass on it. I did pick up the left and pixie cup and the Napco because there was in fact a sale for the vendor. Here we've got some really cute little figural pieces. It's like a little young Santa Claus. His beard hasn't fully formed yet. He's still working on that mustachio. Um, of course, we've got a little Mrs. Claus there. Again, very fair for a collector. I really wasn't feeling it um, for 15 at the set. Cute little spaghetti trimmed Mr. and Mrs. Claus here. And it included like a little... I don't know, a barn as a candle hugger. Notice that these guys, in fact, are taper candle holders. Unfortunately, there was only one barn um, at $19, especially with the original packaging. I love finding stuff with the original packaging. I think it was a great deal. Here, again, I have just recently found one of these. I would, I want to say it was probably a Northeast bank. Um, it was, again, for a Christmas club. We've got some great little vinyl-headed uh, made in Hong Kong. Look at him. Oof, he's creepy. <laughs> uh, I like the little Santa there in the helicopter. These two little cuties, um, I want to say, are actually Napco. They are Santa kids. I think that they're cute with their little soulless eyes there. <laughs> $9.99. You know what? I probably could have picked them up. Um, I have a tendency, especially when I'm out filming, um, especially for the first place, I tend to like hold on to my money a little bit tighter because I really want to find the deals, um, especially if I know I'm going to multiple places before I, before I start feeling a little bit more spendy. That was a great Christmas corsage that I had just picked up there. Look at that. This red flocked reindeer with the blue jeweled eyes. He's got some glitter loss to him. He's priced at $10. Um, I think that there's starting to get a little oversaturation on the um, red flocked deer. So I did decide to go ahead and pass on him. I loved this candle set. Um, it's priced at only $24 for the entirety of it. There was some damage, unfortunately, to the florets or pardon me, the rosettes down on the bottom. We're going to do a little close-up here, but I love the little faces. They're very sweet. So we had some chipping to the petal, or pardon me, the, yeah, the petals, but there was some breakage to the leaves, and that wasn't the only damage, so I did decide to go ahead and pass on those. Here we obviously are in Christmas blow mold heaven. I love the giant deer here. I think it's adorable. We've got some of the blow mold soldiers. Interestingly enough, I just got one. I bought it from uh, Marcy um, from Vintage Bulldog there on Instagram. I'm very happy. It just came in the mail this morning, as a matter of fact. Very happy with it. 
I was going to set it outside. I know some of you just gasped and about fell over. Don't worry. Um, the soldier is safe. I've decided to keep him in on the in interior because his paint is so good. Look at these very happy snowmen. Uh, those would be the empire, the snowmen that we're seeing here. Um, absolutely adorable. This The uh, Santas. I like the little empire Frosty here. He's really cute. Very fairly priced at just $35. That very much seems to be, I will say, a very consistent price that I'm seeing on more of the desk top blow molds is like 30 to 35. I haven't really seen any more expensive than that. I just love it. It's so youthful and childlike and wondrous. I just I love it. Alrighty, guys, here I am seeing this candelabra set here, and this really inspired me to start thinking outside of the box. I love the addition of the greenery and the deer. Um, I did pick up, as you've seen in the previous video, I picked up some candelabras. This one was priced at $45, which I think is really fair, especially given that, you know, somebody put the time and the effort into making it. It is one of a kind, you know? But it did serve as inspiration. So I am going to be actually crafting. I have two sets. So those are going to be coming up soon. Here we have a very large pixie cookie jar. I've never seen one um, this large. I've seen the smaller ones, but which are still large. But those, that one, he was huge. Alrighty, guys, we're going to leave it at some comedic relief here. This is our last item that we're going to feature in today, uh, the Nun baseball team. Unfortunately, there was some damage, so I did leave it behind. Alrighty guys, well there we have it. Did we get a lot? No, we didn't. But did we get some good things? Yeah, we did. And that is all that matters. I hope that you had a guy <laughs> I hope you guys had a good time, enjoyed yourself, maybe got a laugh or two. I don't know. We'll have to see how the voiceover goes. Remember, we were at Lark Mountain Marketplace in Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. I'd recommend coming in, checking it out, having some fun. Really nice people, as always. It was a good time. And speaking of times, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.